Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today I am delighted to share with you my review of the Infrared P2 Pro Infrared Camera, the world's smallest infrared camera. So, full disclosure, the folks at Infrared sent me this camera to review it. I did not pay for it, they gave it to me, and I also have a promo code that you can use on Amazon where you get $50 off the camera and I get a commission if you buy any. So I'm saying that right up front. This, this cannot be a completely unbiased review of the camera if I'm getting some type of commission, but I will do my best to make this completely unbiased, uh, well, at least to appear unbiased. <laughs> I'm giving you my honest review of this. So. First off, the camera itself. This thing is tiny. I mean, look at this. It is minuscule. It, it, it weighs nine grams, and it's supposed to be a direct competitor to other mobile phone infrared cameras. They have it in two versions. It has both a USB-C for Android phones and the other port for Apple phones. I can't remember what it's called. And just for comparison, I've got another mobile phone camera here. This is the Seek Thermal camera. If you look at the size, there's, it's a lot smaller. Um, this thing is tiny. And then FLIR makes an infrared camera for phones too, called the FLIR One. It's way smaller than that one. So this thing is tiny. When you order the camera, you get the camera itself. You get this cute little carrying bag. Isn't that adorable? You get a USB cable. This is a USB-C to USB-C cable. It's a male to female end, so you can not have it attached directly to your phone. And I, I'm glad they sent it because for my phone, I like to keep a carrying case on here. And with the carrying case, it does not quite fit. I stick it in there and the case prevents it from actually fitting in there. This is, there, it just fell out. So for me to use this, I had to, take my case off if I wanted to use it directly with my phone. Once I do that, it fits in. If I didn't want to do that, I could use the cable where I plug it into one end of the cable and then I plug the other end of the cable into my phone. So nicely sent that. And then if you get an upgraded version of it, they will also send you, or an upgraded package, they will also send you a macro lens. It's this little guy here, this slim little thing and the macro lens magnetically attaches to the camera itself. And it's useful if you want to do some really close up stuff. And I mean within inches. As a home inspector, I have never had the need for anything like that. I can't see myself ever using the macro lens. However, one thing that's nice is that the macro lens, it has this little protrusion here and it comes with a dust cap too, which is kind of nice. So. I will opt to always keep it stored that way so I don't damage my lens. And as you can see in the image here, using that macro lens really does make a world of difference if you need close up images of stuff. But again, as I said, as a home inspector, I don't need any of that. So I, I surely would not buy the macro lens. Not, not needed for me. So let's talk about the functionality of this. It has a resolution of 256 by 192, or perhaps I should say 192 by 256. The native images that this thing takes is gonna be in portrait format, up and down. Now as a home inspector, I like taking images in landscape format. That's what we do for everything in our reports. So I'm a, I'm a little frustrated that the native is that way. If you could just turn your phone and things would appear properly. I really wouldn't care, but it's a little bit buggy and I'll get to that. However, let's, let's talk about how this works. And you know, talking about bugs, when I first got it, the setup was a little bit clunky. They said, download this software and the information they gave me wasn't exactly right. What I had to search the store for didn't quite match up with what I was supposed to search the store for. I eventually found the right software installed it, opened the software, and then plugged the camera into my phone, and it gave me this error message saying, OTG error, you need to enable OTG in your phone. 
And I spent about an hour Googling this and trying to figure out how to enable OTG on my phone. Could never figure it out. Everything I read said if I had the latest version of the Android software, it should already be there. And I got a little frustrated. I said, I'll call him the next day. And then before calling him, I tried it one more time and it magically worked. And I haven't had that issue since, but that, that was a slight frustration. The one thing I do like about this is even if my phone is off, I'll plug this thing in and I don't even need to launch the software. It, well, let me unlock my phone here. I don't even need to unlock the software. It just automatically pulls up the software instantly. And if it's working right, it would start displaying an infrared image. It's not. It's just giving me a black screen right now. And this is another one of those things that I found is a little bit buggy with this, this software is that it doesn't always work 100% of the time. It seems to work, and now here's that OTG function error. It seems to work about 80% of the time on the first try. So let's see, I plugged it in there. It's working now. You saw that, that was a perfect demonstration. This couldn't have gone better where it didn't work the first try. Now it's working. I will say the response of the responsiveness of the screen is fantastic with traditional infrared cameras made in the US here when you're when you're waving it around they have a refresh rate I don't know why why these rules are in place but there's this refresh rate limitation of 9 Hertz and it makes some things appear a little bit laggy but with this it's got a refresh rate of 25 Hertz so when you're waving it around there is no visible lag what you see is what you get so I, I do like that a lot and the software has all of the common stuff that you would expect any infrared software to have. It's, it's, it's nothing super special, but it does have everything that I would want. It has a, a palette indicator bar on the side. It's got point temperatures that you can select. You can select a, a square area and it'll tell you the high and low temperatures in there. It has several different color palettes to choose from. It's got all this different stuff and it it's it's all i could ask for for software and it also lets you record video so it's good software other than the fact that it uh <laughs> it doesn't always work and then some of the other stuff so let, let's talk about the drawbacks right now if you're aiming it at something really hot i was doing a blog post last week and i was trying to capture a nice infrared image of a gas fireplace to demonstrate how hot they were and when I would point it at my gas fireplace it would just pixelate the fireplace itself and then it gave me this error message and it's giving me the error message right now as I'm trying to shoot my own face saying it's got burn protection and you shouldn't be doing anything too hot and now I have a red screen again so I'm gonna unplug it I'm gonna plug it back in and maybe it'll work and I don't know maybe my face is just too hot for this I was outside for a while but now it's working again so that's a drawback another drawback to this is that the the color palette bar that I told you about it doesn't automatically show that we ha we have to hit the scale button every time you boot up the phone to get that to appear um, if I if I close out of the software and I come back in it doesn't remember that I want that thing displayed. And then my last beef with the software is that when you turn it into landscape mode, check this out, it, well, I don't know if you can see there or not, it doesn't change the text on the screen. The logo remains the same and the scale remains the same. Now if I do a point and I select a point on the screen, it's actually going to display it properly and it indicates in, in the right orientation what the temperature is. So it knows that I've rotated my phone, but it doesn't rotate all of the text. So some of the text is sideways. All of these things that I'm complaining about right now could surely be fixed with a software upgrade. I say surely. I don't know. I don't write software, but it sure seems like all of this stuff could be fixed with a software upgrade. So those are my main complaints about it but again the good stuff is that the thing is tiny it doesn't have its own power source it relies on the power from your phone 
and it consumes very little power. The image transfer is pretty slick. You save the image and then you can select any of these images and you can send them to Google Drive or you can transfer them to your computer. You can do whatever you want with them. And that's, that's the software. And then, you know, really, when it comes to an infrared camera, I think the proof is in the pudding. The most important part of having an infrared camera is the accuracy of the camera. Can I use it to detect thermal anomalies? The difference between this and that. I don't so much care about the exact temperature readings, I care about the differences. And to pick up on those differences, the most important number you have there, the most important metric is the thermal sensitivity. And this one has a thermal sensitivity, of, it'll, it'll detect differences less than 40 MK. And I don't know exactly what that means, I just know the lower the number the better. For reference, FLIR's mobile phone camera, the FLIR 1, has a thermal sensitivity of 150K. So it's way more sensitive than that. And really it, it ends up creating much better images because of that. And just for comparison, because this is the camera I use for home inspections that just about everybody on my team uses, this has kind of been our standard for about the last decade. It's the FLIR E6 camera. It, it has a slightly lower resolution. This is a 120, by 160, but it's, it's still a great camera. I, I went around my house and I shot a bunch of images. Now I, I use my FLIR camera sideways because I'm comparing to this one. I, I wanted them both in the same orientation. And I, I shot a bunch of images around the house, so I'm gonna show them to you here. And as we go through them here, I'd say the P2 Pro produces far superior images to the FLIR E6. And that's a handheld camera. So I was very happy with the quality of these images. The bottom line is that I think this is a good camera. In fact, no, let me say, I think this is a great camera. The software is subpar. The software needs a little bit of work. It can be a little bit frustrating, but for the price point, this thing retails for $299. And then, like I said, I could give you that promo code, you get another 50 bucks off. So you're getting the camera, the whole thing. For $250, it's tough to beat that. If you're a home inspector and you need a backup infrared camera, I think this would be a fantastic choice. You certainly want, wouldn't want to use this for everyday use because the first time you drop your camera, or first time you drop your phone with the camera plugged in, you're probably going to break your charging port. So you wouldn't want to do this on a regular basis. But if you need a backup camera, or if you're a homeowner, and you have some troubleshooting stuff that you need to work on in your house periodically or you're in some type of trade where you have a need for an infrared camera once a week, once a month, something like that, this would be a fantastic option for you. So, I hope I covered all of my bases. Again, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections and this was my review of the Infrared P2 Pro infrared camera. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.